Hello world, today we are going to solve three questions from the first stage exams of Tubitak Science Olympiads in the year 2021. So let's start with our first question. The question is asking for the output of this whole function. So let's dive into the process. Here we are defining our variables i and j. Sorry. Yeah. And after that, we are defining a two dimensional array here uh, with 16 elements, which corresponds to a matrix with four rows and four columns because of this over here, this notation. So the above is equal to. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Yeah. This array A is equal to this matrix. And then after that, we have a nested loop here. So at first, uh, we are setting i equal to zero. And then for i is uh, less than four, we are going to increment i by one. So we have to first determine how many times is going to, uh, is this loop going to be executed? It's so easy. i is equal to zero, i is equal to one, i is equal to two, and three. If i is four here, this operator states that four should be greater than i, so i wouldn't be uh, fulfilling the condition here. So it would be three at last. And the second loop over here is setting the variable j equal to zero. And then uh, we have the same thing, uh, values going from zero to three. After that, we have a variable h here, which is equal to our matrix with the variables i and j. And after that, we have the matrix uh, with the um, with the variables i and j inside, setting equal to three minus i and three minus j. These two statements over here indicates that for i is equal to one, it will reverse the process. For i is equal to zero, this will set the first element uh, equal to three. And the value of three, uh, the value of the third element in this array would be equal to the first uh, element's value. Which means that, for in this case, this will reverse the matrix a from the center, which gives the last value into the first and the first value into the last. So we are reversing our matrix like this for this code block. Yeah, but after that, we are g getting the same line again, which means that we are reversing our matrix one more time. So this swap over here turns the reversed matrix into the original one again. And after that, we have 
this statement, you have a nested loop again. So this part just prints a new line uh, for dividing the matrix, uh, the output with a line for each row, which makes the output a little bit uh, clear and uh, it increases its readability. And we are just printing the elements of the matrix here. As we said, the matrix is swapped two times, which means that it is just the same as the first one. So our original matrix is going to be printed here. And it was just like this which will lead us uh, to be the output of the matrix A equal to the option A here. So this was our first question. And let's go to the second one. Yeah, the one over here. This also asks for the output of this function. And we have a main function over here, which sets a variable to call the function f that is outside of this function. And by the way, this function is recursive, which we can understand it from the return value of uh, the first if statement. Yeah. So let's try to understand this part at first. First of all, we are defining the, uh, the variable n equal to a million. And then after that, we are setting an array of a million elements. This means that we are going to have values from zero to nine, uh, 900,000, 90,000, and uh, 900. So this minus one. And this is because of uh, our arrays are starting from zero. So if we count this, we have one uh, value over here and then one from 1 million minus one will give this. And if you uh, add them, we will get 1 million. This is so simple. And after that, we have a loop again, setting the value i equal to zero. When i is less than the value of n, which is a million, we are going to increment the value of i and we are going to hover over the elements of the array and over uh, the array a over here, which consists of n elements. Yeah, this line is so important because for the, for the elements, i in this array, we are going to set their value equal to, for example, in this case, let's say second element in the array, we are going to set its value from two to two times two, which will give us four uh, in this example case. And here comes our recursive function. We are setting a variable result equal to the function f with the inputs. So these are the parameters of the function. A, 123, and some huge numbers. So for this case, I am just going to 
interpret this line over here and then without considering the variables, without considering these numbers, I'm going to dive into the f function to understand what this whole code block does over here. So this syntax seems a little bit weird at first, but it's too easy to understand. And it is just an if statement. This indicates that if result is equal to minus uh, negative one, the func uh, you should print just negative one. And by the way, this over here indicates that one is a is an integer, but it has been changed. And then this semicolon, uh, sorry, colon indicates that if result is not equal to negative one for all of the other values, you are going to print just the variable result over here. And then as always, the main function returns zero after all of the process is complete. But uh, we are going to execute the function f with the values over here. So let's dive into the to our function. If r is greater than or equal to one. So let's check our variable r. It is a huge number. So it is obviously greater than or equal to one. We can ignore this. And because this if statements, if statement will be true, we can just ignore the return statement over here, which indicates that the output of this function would be negative one, but it's not. So we can eliminate the option A. After that, we are defining an integer m to be equal to one plus r minus one divided by two. So we are going to first execute this part, obviously, which will give us divided by two. So what we can do over here is that set this value equal to a million minus four and then divide this by two and that is going to be equal to this number after that we after that we know that this part is equal to this value and we are just going to add one to this. So let's think about this more theoretically. For an integer r, we are actually implementing a binary search algorithm here. So I want to talk about how does a binary search algorithm work. Actually, it is more about the if statements over here. So I want to say that this m integer is the middle part of the value r. And it is also the middle part of the array in this case. So for the m mth element of this array, if it is equal to x, we are going to return the value m over here. And let's take a look at what we have done to our array a in our main function. We just multiplied the uh, the i-th element of the array with its value doubled. And now 
we are returning just the uh, empt element of this array again. So we can reverse the process over here by taking the integer x parameter here, which was this value. And actually dividing it by two. And we have just executed this part of the function. It is just printing the result variable and the result variable corresponds to our function f with these values. So this value divided by two will give us the output output of this whole code block, which is equal to option C. And let's dive into binary sorting a little bit. So let's say that this is a phone book and I am trying to find a person by its name and mm, let's say that this note uh, this phone book is sorted alphabetically so i am just going to look at the left part of this function uh, th this phone book and if this person is not at the left part of this uh, le left part of this phone book I'm just going to tear it down. Uh, it's a little bit too many papers. I am just going to tear it down and I am going to be left with just the right part of this phone book. So I am going to do the process again. If I could not find the person over here, I am gonna tear it down and continue with the remaining parts yeah and this was a really good question i think because like we are not considering these values but just looking at what does the function f actually does in theory and then we are basically interpreting just this value over here and dividing it by two by reversing the process. And by the way, this part just indicates what we have done with the phone book. It subtracts one from the value M when the value of the M element in the array is greater than x. But this over here is not uh, execute this if block. It will just jump into this return value, which increases the value of m by 1, which you may think of just going to the upper bound and dealing with the the value after that point so this is m and this is m plus one 